Today I'm inviting you to join me for a unique lesson on the topic of women, equity, and equality. And there are two reasons why I'm sharing this lesson. First, it's a common topic of interest and discussion among my students, including members of my Confident Women community. And generally speaking, around the world, it's a hot topic of conversation. The second reason is this lesson will be released on International Women's Day, and this year's theme is Embrace Equity. Sharing this lesson with you is my way of celebrating and giving you the opportunity to develop the language you need to talk about women, equity, and equality in English. Now, what makes this Confident English lesson particularly unique and special is that not only will I share must-have vocabulary on this particular topic, but you'll also get to hear from students of mine from around the world. Before I continue, if you don't already know, I'm Anne-Marie with Speak Confident English. Everything I do is designed to help you get the confidence you want for your life and work in English. One way I do that is with my weekly Confident English lessons, where I share my top confidence and fluency building strategies, targeted grammar lessons, and unique topical lessons, just like with this one today. While you're here, make sure you subscribe to my Speak Confident English channel so you never miss one of my future lessons. Now, as I've mentioned, this particular lesson is unique. It's quite different from most of the lessons I provide, and you'll find three specific sections in this lesson. First, I'm going to provide a bit more context or background on International Women's Day. Then I'm going to share with you eight must-have vocabulary words for any conversation on the topic of women's equity and equality. And finally, I'm going to share snippets or short segments of interviews I did with seven of my students from around the world. I asked seven women in my Confident Women community to join me for a discussion on this topic of women's equity, and I asked each of them four specific questions. I wanted to get their perspective on celebrating International Women's Day and this year's theme, Embrace Equity. Not only will you get to hear their thoughts, you'll also learn essential vocabulary along the way. So first, here's a bit of context. International Women's Day is a day that celebrates and honors the social, economic, cultural, and political impact and achievements of women around the world. This particular day, International Women's Day, became globally recognized in 1911. It's a direct result of women becoming more vocal about the discrimination and inequality they faced on a daily basis. And of course, ever since this became an internationally recognized day, women have continued to be vocal about their rights. Every year, there's a specific theme to focus conversations on women's rights. This year, the challenge is to imagine a world free of bias, stereotypes, and discrimination. A world that's diverse, equitable, and inclusive. A world where difference is valued and celebrated. With that in mind, I want to move on to the next section where I'm going to share with you eight vocabulary words to use on conversations on the theme of embracing equity. To really understand this year's theme and to understand the issue of women's equality and equity overall, we have to understand what equity means and how is it different from equality. I'm going to share with you the precise definitions in a moment, but before I do, I want to create a mental picture for you. Now, I don't know what your family may look like, but I want you to imagine a family going on a bike ride together, and this may include two adults, a 10-year-old, and a five-year-old child. It may also include a grandparent. If two adults and two kids of different ages and someone who's elderly all go on a bike ride together, you will want to make sure everyone has a bicycle, of course. But would you give everyone the exact same bicycle? Of course not. The bicycle you ride would not be appropriate at all for a 10-year-old or a 5-year-old. 
and it most likely wouldn't be appropriate for someone's grandparent. Moreover, it wouldn't be fair. There would be significant difficulties, maybe even potential disasters, if everyone was given the same bicycle. Equality says everyone gets a bike. Equity says, yes, everyone gets a bike and we adjust it so that it's appropriate for that individual. Now that you have that mental picture, let's talk about the specific definitions of equality and equity. Equality is the state of being equal in status, rights, freedom, and opportunity. Equity is a state in which everyone is treated fairly and equally. There's freedom from bias and discrimination. Now that you have clarity on those two words, here are six more must-have vocabulary words on the topic of women, equality, and equity. Because this year's theme is embrace equity, let's talk about the verb to embrace. This verb actually has two potential meanings. The first possible definition is to accept new ideas, beliefs, or methods. And the second meaning of embrace means to put your arms around someone and to hold them. An example sentence using this word embrace might be, when we embrace each other, we promote unity among communities and societies. The next word is to empower. This means to give someone the confidence, the skills, strength, and freedom to do something. For example, lifelong learning empowers women to take control of their lives. And now, inclusivity. This noun means the equal, fair treatment, and involvement of all people, things, and ideas. For example, the company embraced a new marketing campaign that prioritized inclusivity. Our sixth word is forge. This means to form or bring something into being, bring something into existence through effort. For example, past generations forged a path for the rights we have today. Number seven on our list is to value. This means to attach monetary worth to something or to consider or rate the usefulness of something. For example, I value my independence and freedom. The last one on our list, to take a step forward. This means to make progress or make an effort to bring improvement. For example, being vocal about our rights helped us to take a step forward. Now that you have these eight must-have vocabulary words to help you discuss the topic of women, equality, and equity, I'd love to introduce you to Mariana, Mary, Vanya, Rijani, Adriana, Sunny, and Jinsa. These are the seven women I interviewed to get their thoughts on the importance of celebrating International Women's Day. I also asked each of them what equity means to them and how we as a society can take steps forward toward a more equitable world. In the third section of this lesson, you'll find the four questions I asked each of these ladies and you'll hear how each of them responded. Along the way, I'll highlight essential vocabulary that they use. Now, in addition to listening to these interview snippets, I encourage you to visit this lesson at the Speak Confident English website. There you'll find each of the vocabulary words that I highlight, along with the specific sentence in which it was used and an alternative example. It's a great way to carefully study and practice all the vocabulary available in this lesson today. In doing so, you'll learn 24 new words and phrases that you can use for meaningful conversations on the topic of women, equity, and equality. Now, before I share with you the first question that was asked and short segments of each interview, I want to finish by saying an enormous thank you to each of the women that participated in this process with me. It takes a tremendous amount of courage to share your thoughts, express your voice in another language. And I'm so proud of each woman who contributed to this lesson today. 
And now, here's the first question I asked. What does International Women's Day mean to you? Celebrating International Women's Day evokes two different emotions within me. First of all, I really celebrate the um, social achievement of women. And I think it's great that a lot of women can lead a good life nowadays. On the other hand, International Women's Day reminds me of the fact that women almost all over the world are underprivileged somehow. International Women's Day is a happy day on the one hand, but on the other hand, it serves as a reminder mm. uh, in order to support people or women all over the world. Well, I grew up in a traditional Greek society under the rule that a woman is uh, to, to be a dedicated wife and devoted mother. So women in Greece lived in a way that stereotype beliefs and discrimination against their gender were totally acceptable. Um, due to the way that they have been raised, women feel scared to express their pain and their fear, so they remain silent. International Women's Day for me is an opportunity to challenge the past and stand up for those incredible women uh, who have the courage, um, the grit, and uh, the tenacity to stand out of the dead end uh, situation and assert a better life. And every year, it reminds me that I am privileged, quote unquote, because throughout my life, I have had many opportunities, chances, rights, which are still a mirage for many women around the world. And it's important uh, for me not to take them for granted because they have been conquered by strong women before me. And that's the reason why I feel obliged to do the same for the ones that are coming next. International Women's Day celebration gives us an opportunity to acknowledge and honor the every bit of contribution given by women all over the world to make this a better place. And it also marks a call to action for accelerating gender parity, to fight against patriarchy, and to realize our own fundamental rights as a human being. And moreover, by adapting all these activities, we can ourselves become role models for the young girls all around the world and make them believe that there is still hope and path forward towards achieving greatness. I have been reflecting so much about that question <laughs> because for me it's the day that we can celebrate and look through the history and about everything that has happened through like um, women that have sh reshaped our society, that has made a huge impact on the way we live. So for me, it's a day to celebrate the little wins that we got through the, the time, through the history, and inspire us to progress, to keep fighting, to get better, and to get our voice heard. Because if we have our voice heard today, it was because of those women that fought before. Well, International Women's Day is a day that serves as a reminder of the continuous effort to achieve equality as the rights and opportunities for all women. Additionally, it's a day that we are able to see all the path that we've been walking I and mean, we can see the progress that has been made, but additionally, acknowledge that there's a lot of work still to be done. International Women's Day uh, is a celebration, it's a reminder, it's also a call to action. First, it's a celebration. So it's a celebration of the accomplishment and uh, contributions of women over the past 100 years. Uh, second, I would say it's a reminder 
So it reminds us the gender equality is not just a woman issue, it's also a human right issue that affects us all. Uh, lastly, I would say uh, IWD is a call to action. So it promotes us to create a more just, uh, equitable and inclusive world for all. Question number two was, is there a particular women's empowerment moment that has inspired you? It's not just a, an inspiring moment. It's a women empowerment program, which has inspired me a lot, which has contributed a lot towards the women empowerment in rural India. Indian society with its uh, deep-rooted patriarchal ideologies and the traditional dominant female domestic responsibilities which is coupled with social stigma has all limited their advancement towards economic development and even their decision making skills and other access towards other opportunities like education, healthcare, when they are compared with their male equivalents. So with the implementation of the Women Empowerment Program by the government, which is Women Self-Help Group, it's a group wherein the women coming together and making frequent monetary contributions. And this system works as a microfinance system and provides loans to micro loans to women who want to pursue their entrepreneurial opportunities and to support and those who wanted to be supported in performing their entrepreneurship activities. And it also paved the way for in their decision making skill as well. So in a nutshell, this women empowerment program has made more opportunities for the women in rural India exposed to the formal services of banking and it has even impacted on their ability to take part in political participation, financial literacy and so on. So this particular program has made a revolutionary momentum and bring a, brought about holistic development in the life of women in rural India. And thus they are made self-reliant. And this has inspired me a lot. Uh, sure. So there is a lot of women's empowerment moment happening daily around us. Uh, I would like to share one moment that inspired me recently when uh, was when I attend a workshop lead for women for the leader. Um, so where a group of women around the country come together and share their experience and the stories of overcoming the adversity and creating positive change in their uh, company or and their communities. Uh, hearing their stories of strength and resilience was truly inspiring. And, and it reminded me the importance of supporting and uplifting women and girls. Girls. Yes, actually, I remember some uh, a particular thing that resonates with me very deeply, and it's Emma Watson's "He for She" campaign. She launches this campaign with a powerful speech in the United Nations, and she. Uh, emphasize the importance of engaging men and boys in in this movement and making by making them uh, active allies uh, fighting with this fighting with us and the campaign aims to uh, raise awareness about the way in which traditional 
uh, roles and stereotypes could harm both women and men. When I think through the history, I think for me was the right to vote. I'm going to explain why the right to vote, because I know a lot of countries, they do not allow the vote because women's voice cannot be heard at all. But I think when you have the right to vote, you have the option, the, the power to decide the next leadership. You have the power to choose someone who going to be supporting you, to going to help us to continue this work of empower women in a, a diverse places. So that's the reason I think when I think through the history, the right to vote for me is the most powerful thing that we could have. So in full disclosure of Mary, despite the history has borne a long, um, a long list of powerful and strong women, what always strikes me the most, honestly, is the unmatchable grit and resilience of common women who live in countries or circumstances where their rights and their dignity are constantly trampled, where they are uh, labeled not for their valuable skills, but for uh, the, the color of the skin, uh, or the race, or all those women who, despite those circumstances, are able to grit their teeth and uh, achieve something remarkable in life, something important for them. All those women are really and uh, deeply and profoundly inspiring for me. Um, yes, nowadays many modern um, women through personal heart experiences um, exemplify showing us how to become the best version of ourselves. Um, Katerina Vrana is a Greek stand-up comedy, comedian based between London and Athens. And um, a few years ago, uh, she had an adventure with her health in Malaysia. Uh, Katerina had a, a germ and uh, the whole system became infected. Her blood is uh, totally contaminated and got sepsis. And after the sepsis shock, she suffered from um, different problems with her movement, speech and vision. Uh, to take, today, Katerina, despite um, the health problems she faces, she has not lost her sense of humor and uh, she never stops fighting about her life. So Katerina, for me, is a person that reminds me how to appreciate my life, my breath, single things in my daily life, and how to be strong in order to overcome anything unpleasant in my life. I was greatly inspired by Michelle Obama's autobiography, and it's a book on the life of the first Afro-American first lady of the US. And in her book, Michelle Obama describes her career that started in Chicago's working class area. And the book finishes with her and Barack Obama's leaving the White House. And mm -hmm. although it becomes clear that it was mainly her determination and her amb ambition that made that incredible career possible. I think there were a lot of people around her who empowered her in a way. Question three. This year's International Women's Day theme is Embrace Equity. What does that mean to you? I love that question because I had, I, I had to research, I'm going to be honest, because I realized I got confused about equality but then I was like, okay, embrace equity. So when I heard, when I read it through about what it means, embrace equity, made me think about how we can provide resources to people, to women, so they can be who they are. So they can just be themselves and show the true selves in 
workplaces, in education, at school, especially at school, because I think education has a, a, a key part to play here because it's what it shapes. <laughs> it challenges everyone in terms of um, what you're going to pursue as a career. So why I'm saying all of this? Because I am part of the STEM area because I'm a woman in the technology and I've seen the diversity and how challenging it is for a woman to pursue a career in a STEM environment. So for me, when I saw about equity and I was like, yes, we need to embrace equity to empower those little girls that are starting their journey so they can just be like, oh, I can do that. I, it's, it's for me as well. I can do it. It's not just be shy and I don't need to change to be in a technology environment. I can use my characteristics. I can use uh, who I am what I know to change and get a better technology uh, in the industry and help people to <laughs> get, uh, help people to have a better life because that's the meaning of working technology is you to improve the quality of life that people have. So personally speaking uh, and simply put, I think that uh, gender equity means uh, respecting all the people without discrimination and uh, our conscious bias, regardless of uh, their gender. It's uh, definitely the bridge to providing the same uh, responsibilities, the same opportunities, the same benefits. It's also the, um, the bridge to treating, of course, all people fairly and equally and to welcoming diversity of thought. I, ultimately, I think that uh, gender equity drives uh, creativity and innovation. And uh, of course, opens the door to, to progress, to progress. The Embrace Equity campaign as a part of International Women's Day celebration, it goes that Providing equal opportunities to all people is no longer enough for achieving our goal of equality. Even though our goal is to achieve equality, equity is a means through which we can achieve that goal. So by the idea of equity, we have to make changes in the structural and systematic barriers so for that, we have to look inward and identify those things that which are holding us back from achieving our personal and professional success. And this enables us to understand and consider the unique needs of other people and encourage them and support them. For example, we know that women representation in top jobs and in top leadership positions are very less. So by providing more flexible working environment, career advancement options, parental payment, all these things are means through which women can be supported to achieve their dreams and success. So what I think is that we women are more stronger together than when we are against one another. And it is hard. Well, I think that embrace, embrace Equity is calling us for keep equity in top of mind. Is to make equity part of our daily lives, incorporated in our way of living. I think it's not enough just to think about equity, but work actively toward creating a more equal and fair society for women. In my opinion, embrace equity means to recognize that we do not all start from the same place and that we should support 
women who are underprivileged. Mm -hmm. And so, for instance, we could support children who come from educational deprived families mm -hmm. by offering some tuition to them. Mm -hmm. And yes, I think it's important to back organizations who fight for equality or equal rights. And uh, I would like to do that too. Well, I think it's essential for all of us to support people from all over the world uh, who are underprivileged or disadvantaged. And I think they should gain equal rights and they should receive help when needed. Mm -hmm. Mm, to me, embrace equity means uh, we working together to ensure that everyone has equal voice and that all of our perspectives are heard and are valued. And also everyone has equal opportunities and has equal access to the resource, regardless of our gender, color, or our social status. And also we need to recognize that diversity and inclusion are strengths and that we creating a more equitable world are bene benefiting us for all. Equity for me means to accept the other, to accept the, the individual with its own character characteristics and recognize the same treatment and opportunities. So, especially when we discuss about gender, gender equity, equity means respect all people, regardless their gender, without any discrimination. Um, this doesn't mean that we are the same, we are different. But um, as we, we, we are different, but we need the same space in order to, to grow and uh, breathe. And now question four. What steps can we take as a society to embrace equity? We should keep on increasing awareness and educate it more because I think that if more people is thinking about it and probably they're going to take small actions when combined it would be a big impact. But additionally, I think more particularly, like in the workplace, companies should, should be implemented policies to ensure equal payments. Additionally, to encourage mentorship programs, uh, sponsorships, to increase the female representations on leadership positions. Uh, in my opinion, I think there's maybe three steps we can take as a society to embrace equity. Uh, first, I think we can work together to change our attitudes and beliefs uh, that uh, perpetuate inequality and the discrimination. For example, we can have a conversation with our family, our friends or colleagues about the gender equality and the challenges those harmful beliefs and attitudes and the promoting a more equitable and inclusive society. And the second, I think we can work to create a more inclusive and equitable workplace. Uh, where everyone have equal opportunities and have equal resources. Every make sure every voice can be heard and all perspective can be valued. And lastly, I think we can support those organizations or those initiatives that work towards the gender equality. Uh, whether through some donations or volunteer our time or our skills or participating in activism or advocacy efforts. In order to make a sustainable change towards embracing equity, as a society, we have to make collective efforts in a sustainable manner or in a consistent manner. So before jumping into the solution, we have to educate ourselves about the issues related to gender, races, and other forms of oppressions. 
and make us aware about the bias and stereotypes existing within a society. And again, we have to keep up and amplify the voices of marginalized groups of people such as women, people of color, economically disadvantaged people or even disabled people who are largely impacted by this discrimination and inequality. So we have to create a more diverse and inclusive environment in our community, in our workplaces and even in schools where people from these backgrounds are valued and supported. And again, we can advocate for policies and practices that support equality and address the discrimination issues against women. Hmm. In many countries, I think there are already equal opportunities officers for various socially disadvantaged people. And I think this is already a great step towards equity. And in addition, I think we should encourage disadvantaged and non-disadvantaged people to meet, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps in community centers or so. And I think they should exchange their ideas concerning equity. equity. And that would also be a huge step towards integration and integration is a good step towards equity so uh, yeah. I think that would be nice yeah. and well as a former teacher I've got a certain idea I think I would include equity as a normal subject into the curriculum mm -hmm. and uh, so the subject could be taught in a practical lesson which would make young people aware of the fact that there are lots of um, underprivileged people. And so they could find their own way how they could help. As a society, we can uh, take uh, many steps and uh, we can uh, change our behavior and our mindset. We, have, we can um, establish a behavior analysis system um, in every level in order to remove all, all beliefs and taboo for women and uh, change the way we, we see women's role and value. So uh, if we would like to change the world, we should see a future without restrictions and any other uh, discrimination. So I think that uh, in order to build uh, a real uh, equity in our society um, and a society where there is no veil of discrimination, it's critical to increase participation of all the genders in uh, public, political, and the professional life, especially in um, all those high positions in order to break the traditional glass ceiling. And uh, of course, uh, moreover, I think that uh, it's absolutely paramount to get uh, rid of all those harmful and uh, unacceptable practices against uh, women and girls, which are happening, are still happening all around the world. And in order to do that, uh, whether we like or not, we need some political changes and some new, uh, fresh, strict rules. Ultimately, I think that uh, despite many international agreements uh, affirming uh, human rights of all the genders, there are still situations all around the world uh, which are um, frankly speaking, unfathomable. And uh, I think we have uh, still, we still have a lot of work to buckle down to in order to reach that. I've been thinking a lot about that question because I feel like it's so challenging. It's because I see that it's so huge gap in the industry in general, in terms of uh, equity not only for women, but globally uh, for gender, 
it doesn't matter. I think even in the male predominant, I think uh, uh, because of the race, because color, we have a lot of things. But going back to our team, that it's the Women's Day, I think it's um, as a society, we can increase the awareness, I believe, in, for the parents, for teachers, for the education. And I've seen a lot of communities that it's helping because when you have a community that helps you to see different stories, people has been through the journey that can offer helps and guide you through the way. So that's the reason I'm part of the STEM ambassador in UK. And I love that because I want to help them to see that it's possible, that they can make different, that they can make impact just using technology. I am so grateful to have you join me for this lesson today. And I would love to invite you to share your thoughts on the same four questions. What does International Women's Day mean to you? Is there a particular women's empowerment moment that has inspired you? Given this year's theme of embrace equity, how would you describe what that means to you? And lastly, what steps can we take as a society to embrace equity? As always, you can share your thoughts and questions with me in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining me in this lesson today, and I look forward to seeing you next time.